How's it going guys? And finally we are back. The 1.14 update came out and now I can turn my head just like it should be again. So that's freaking great that they got rid of that. So without further ado, today we are working on the second set of the spells tutorial. Uh, this is the thing that we are going to be creating. Let me enable the demo pack. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to be going over the second spell and this is going to... Uh, this one is going to have some ray casting involved it's actually simpler than the fireball in terms of like well it's a little bit complex but the spell itself is very short and it won't take us very long to make it should take about 15 minutes 15 to 20 minutes um, but anyway we're going to have some really cool stuff this is what it's going to do just so that you don't have to waste your time uh, so here we go we hit him and it shows how much damage we did minus 10 minus 10 and as you can see it makes sense because villagers have 20 health and also the bullet stops once i hit him so that's also very useful so bullet stops when i hit him and it shows how much damage I dealt. And that is a variable value, and it's not something I have to hard code. It will forcefully say how much damage I dealt. Let me just kill him. All right, so, and I right now, in our spells pack, there will be a download for the base spells pack in the description. We've already done one video on this, and uh, and it covered a fireball, but the base pack won't have the fireball code. So if you want to do it, you guys got to go back to that video and uh, just follow the steps. It doesn't take super long. But that's just how you make the fireball. But I just wanted to give you guys a base pack to start off of if you just want to start making your own spells. We haven't added mana consumption, but it's super easy to add that. Uh, you would just have to remove uh, remove uh, score and then check if they have enough when they want to do the spell. Um, but anyways, so let's go ahead and disable this data pack that's already doing things and get into making this thing because just like normal i make it myself then we make it from scratch or from the base that we're at all right so here we are and this is your functions data pack uh, this is the functions so we covered this last time if we go to spells directory so what happens when i right click a carrot on a stick is it takes me to this directory and uh, i'm going to keep these other files open because i might need them but anyway so the directory is going to have a thing where it grabs the element that it is off of the data tag from the item. It grabs the spell ID from the data tag of the item. And then based on that element and spell ID, we figure out what to do. So we're gonna add another line here and call it light, okay? And this is going to be element two. So light will be element two. And I'm only doing this kind of thing for organization because it helps. So we're gonna go light, okay? Then inside light, we're gonna do the same thing that fire does. So fire has a directory. So we're gonna go light, then we're gonna go fire, uh, directory, I mean, and this will play, if the ID is one, it will play light slash uh, beam. I'll just call it beam. That's all right. All right, so then the, we're gonna need a folder for this because there's more than one file and I don't wanna get things out of hand. So it's gonna play beam slash init. So this means we start. We start the beam, all right? So in the starting the beam, so this is still stuff that's going to play when the player has the item. So what is it gonna play? And we can get rid of these directories. All right, so what it's gonna play is we're going to have to start the raycast line, okay? So we're gonna start the raycast line and we're also going to set the damage because we wanna make this damage variable because that's a really cool thing to do. So you're also going to want to pop into init and create a new scoreboard called damage which we'll be able to adjust so scoreboard players set add s meaning the player who played it damage 10 and i'm actually going to make it eight so that you know that there's no mumbo jumbo going on no magic this is all variable uh, then we're going to do execute positioned up 1.4 so this is going to make it move the command play point to where my eye level is then run function spells colon light slash uh, spells colon spells slash light slash beam slash raycast. All right, so now we're gonna start doing the real raycast, which I've gone over before, but I haven't really gone over in depth like how to make it stop at certain points and hit things. So now we're going to actually do that. So raycasting is pretty simple. Let me grab, do, 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 I don't need that. Here we go. I need this particle. So we are going to play an end rob particle. All right. Then what we're going to do is after we play that end rob particle, we are going to position it one direction that it's facing. 
and we are going to play the command. Now we want it to stop when it hits block. So we're going to go if block, uh, and then it's going to play this thing unless block tilde 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 hashtag uh, Minecraft colon my air. So if it's in a block called my air, and I can put this, if I put it before, then it will allow the bullet to go one in the bullet. <laughs> It'll allow, oh, I'm on a, automatically demonetized. It'll allow the raycast to go one inside the block. If we put it after, then it will stop right before it goes inside a block. So that's just a cool little thing that you can adjust depending on what you want to do. Um, okay, so that's going to make it stop if it sees air. All right, so let's make it go one deeper inside just because we can because i prefer it that way all right now we need to make it do stuff constantly so you're going to do execute if entity at e type equals and this is where i forget okay so this is where we have spells uh do i call it it has to be the file name so it's ha hashtag spells tut colon it has to be the folder name so make sure this is your folder name and then it'll be uh enemy okay so it'll hit an enemy and if there's any within a distance of point uh within 0 0.7 i think i did 0 0.7 oh, 1.35 and we are also going to force this thing to be positioned down by like 0 0.7 because the origin of the hitbox is on the feet um, so this is just going to give a big hitbox and you can go into a lot of testing of, uh, like figuring out the perfect hitbox. I have some nice hitboxes for, uh, tall creatures and it does headshot, body shot, leg shot, but this is just a simple version for now, guys. So then if there is one, then we're going to do stuff. Now we also want to stop this when it hits something. So we'll add another case. So unless there is something that it finds. And what we need to do to make it do the exact same finding thing is we have to position the thing down negative 0.7 so that we're consistent. See how we find it after positioning down. So we're going to position down and then after we check, we're going to position back up. So this is what we're doing. So here's the bullet. It's right here. The, the ray cast, right? It's right here. We're gonna temporarily move it down, see if it sees something, then move it back up. If it didn't see something, even if it did, it's, it's still gonna move it back up. Then if it didn't see something, then it'll move forward in the direction it's going. Uh, for the check, the other line, we just move it down and see if there's something there. All right, so then we're gonna go run function spells colon generic slash damage. All right, so now we're gonna create a new generic file, which is for damaging entities. So this is gonna be damage. Okay, let's clear it. Uh, so this is based off of a, another video that I've done where we grab the health of the entity, we put it on a scoreboard, then we put the, so we're gonna go, let's go through this. Where was our init? Here's our, uh, not this one, our init for the pack. All right, so we're gonna need another generic scoreboard called health, all right? So we go execute as at e type equals villager, store result score health, uh, at s health, run data get entity at s health. So that will get their health and put it on the scoreboard. So if I go scoreboard object to the sidebar, if I put the sidebar to be health, you will see 20, 20, 20, 10 for these villagers. And I'm 51, that's arbitrary because I use this scoreboard for other things in this world. So first we are going to get their health, right? Then we're going to do, and instead of all of them, we're just going to do this one, this specific one. So instead of doing every villager, we just do this one. All right. And uh, spells, this is a entity tag and we're gonna be dealing with, we'll add the entity tags afterwards, um, but it's basically a way of grouping a group of entities that you want to, uh, that you want the game to recognize. So more than just one guy. So I don't have to put every case and I can change it up in the top level of my code rather than the bottom level. So it's not as annoying. So first we do this, then we go 
let's continue along this line. Scoreboard, players, operation, that guy, his health is going to minus equals R damage. So add S is still the player because we haven't changed who's playing the command. So the player is still playing the command. So add S will give us the damage of the player that shot. And this is very multiplayer friendly. Uh, so then it will remove it. Then we can do some checks here. You can go um, execute if this guy... Uh, if his uh, if his score of health is less than zero, then you know that he's going to die. So you can do some checks in here to like do something on death. But all I'm going to do is I'm going to go... Uh, we are going to go... Uh, it was here. We say... Eh, no one really cares about that. I'm sorry if I have to look back here a little bit. Um, why do I have this... Okay, I might have added a few things. Um, but sorry if I have to go back here a little bit. I mean, this other one is kind of messy anyway, and it has some code from other things. Um, but uh, I, I made this thing like two months ago or one month ago, so I don't have it perfectly memorized. All right, so we're going to play spells tut colon generic slash indicator. So we're going to play that file, okay? Uh, and let me change this to spells underscore tut. I'm forgetting to do that. For you guys, this word is going to be whatever namespace you use. Mine is spells tut. Yours is uh, something else. All right, so we need one more generic function, and this one is going to be indicator. And this is something that I'm not going to build here because it's very complicated, and I've gone over it previously. Um, not this specific thing, but I've gone over it previously. Uh, spells tut colon enemy. All right, so I've gone over this before. Basically what we're doing is we put an oak sign 150 blocks in the sky the oak sign on it says the score of my damage then we summon an item that has a name that's red then we copy the data from the sign the words from the sign onto the item and then that is it, and the item will have the name on it. And then we make the item die by giving it a high age. So this is all that you need, and it will be linked in the description from the download, because um, I have to copy-paste it, of course. So that's fine. That's all you need for this indicator. So back to the damage function. So we play the indicator. We play the indicator. Then we get the health. We remove the health. Then we can go scoreboard, players, operation. Oh, no, no, no. You go execute, store, result. Execute, store, result, entity. And then you go health. And this one is a float, scale of one. And then you go scoreboard, players, gets, add S, health. Okay. So we need this thing. So it will store on the health data their health score. So whatever this new health is after removing it. Okay. So grab health, remove from the scoreboard, put the scoreboard back on the health. I've gone over this before. There's a tutorial on it on my channel. Um, now the last thing is I just need to do this, this part right here as... So that the at S is talking about the villager. All right, so that's really all there is to it. Sorry if that took a while. I'm trying to just get back into the groove of things. Um, but let's refresh. And let's see. So when we right click, let's go slash function, spells, colon, light, light beam, light beam init. So the thing that's not working, oh, I forgot to add the tags. Let's add the tags. So let me go to data packs. The uh, link that I have in the description will have this thing in it already. So that's good. That way you have it. So you got to go tags, entity types, and uh, let me change it to enemy since that's the convention we used. 
All right, so enemies are villager. And if you want to add more things that this can hit, you can go like that and then you do like zombie. So it hits a villager and a zombie. All right, so then that groups those entities together. So if you ever want to change who you're hitting, it's easier. Then also we have to add my air. So let's see tags, blocks, let's copy glass and call this my air. Glass is just a demo thing. So my air is going to include air. This one is going to include lever. And that's it. Just so that it can, oh, and we'll also include the, the type of glass just so that just for the hell of it so that it can go through a few things but not water all right i had a bunch of fixes to make guys the anywhere you see the word spells needs to change the spells i mean anywhere you see the word spells underscore tut it needs to be spells i'm getting confused because my namespaces are different um and then one thing was in the raycast there was in the raycast you need to make it if block is air if it's in the air then keep going right um and that was really the only changes that need to be fixed now the other thing is you have to go before you play the indicator you have to do this tag add us add damaging tag add us remove damaging and why do we do this so we do this because We do this so that what can happen is when uh, the sign is placed, this is like a multiplayer compatibility thing to add. So when it places the indicator sign, it's going to pick the nearest player and there's you can't do at S in the sign. It has to be at least at P for the score. So since it has to be at P, then it won't work for multiplayer unless you specify what the nearest player you want. So we add this tag to the player, it picks the player with that tag, and then it removes the tag. So no two people can have the tag at the same time. And I have tested this and it works. So there you go, 888-888-888-888 damaging. Uh, the hitbox kind of sucks on it, it's not very big. And I also made it so barriers are not considered air. So that's why it's not hitting the second guy as well. I didn't add it to my air list, but you can add it to the air list if you want. Anyways guys, kind of longer one. Um, I'm going to try and uh, edit things out. Uh, also, quick update, the server website's up. I'm working to get the server out for 1.14 since it's already released, and uh, it, things are coming along pretty cool. You can check out the, the website. But anyways, than that, see you guys. Peace.